In experiment number four, we're going to use a spectrometer known as a SPECT20 to determine the percent iron in an unknown sample by making a Beer's Law plot using known concentrations of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution and converting it into a red-orange colored iron phenethylene complex. Tear a small beaker on the analytical balance. Away about 0.0245 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfite hexahydrate into the small beaker. It won't be more than a few crumbs. Record the exact mass. Using some distilled water from your squirt bottle, dissolve the solid and transfer it to a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. Fill the 25 milliliter milliliter volumetric flask to the mark using distilled water. Then cap it and invert several times to make sure it's evenly mixed. This solution is referred to as stock one. Pour stock one into a clean dry beaker. And then pipette 10 milliliters of stock one into a 50 mil volumetric flask. Fill the 50 ml volumetric flask to the line with distilled water, cap, and mix well. This is what we call stock 2. Pour stock 2 into a dry burette. Fill the burette above the 20 milliliter line and then drain some into the waste until you're right at 20 milliliters. Using a clean, dry, 50 ml volumetric flask, add the appropriate volume of stock 2 from the burette into the volumetric flask. For solution number A, we want to add 1 milliliter. So we would drain from 20 down to 21 milliliters. For solutions number B, we'll add 2 milliliters. For solution C, we would add 4 milliliters. For solution D, we'll add 6 milliliters. And for solution E, we'll add 8 milliliters. Next, we'll add 5 milliliters of 10% hydroxylamine, 10 milliliters of 10% sodium acetate, and 25 milliliters of 110 phenethylene solution to the volumetric flask that contains the 1 milliliters of ferrous ammonium sulfate from our burette. If you've done this correctly, the solution should not change color until you add the phenethylene. Upon adding the phenethylene, the solution is going to start to turn a little orange color. In the next step, we'll fill the volumetric flask to the mark with distilled water. Once we've filled the volumetric flask to the mark with distilled water and mixed it well, we can transfer solution A to a clean, dry test tube. You do not need all of the solution that's in the volumetric flask. You just need to fill the test tube near the top. This will be enough for the spectrometer. Clean out your volumetric flask in the sink, wash it, and prepare it for the next solution. You do not need to dry the volumetric flask because you're always going to be filling it to the mark with distilled water. But it is important to wash it well so that you don't have any residual orange color from the first solution. Repeat the preceding steps to make solution B using two milliliters of the stock iron solution from the burette followed by 5 milliliters of hydroxylamine, 10 milliliters of sodium acetate, 25 milliliters of 110 phenethylene, and then filling to the mark with distilled water. Transfer this solution to test tube B. Repeat this procedure for solution C using 4 milliliters of this stock iron, solution D using 6 milliliters of the stock iron, and solution E using 8 milliliters of the stock iron. You should now have five solutions, A through E. 
while partner number one is making solutions A through E, partner number sh two should prepare the unknown. Pair a small dry beaker on the electrical balance. Weigh about 0.0245 grams of the unknown iron into the beaker and record the exact mass. Dissolve the iron unknown in a small beaker using some distilled water and transfer it to a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. Fill the, fl fill the flask to the mark with distilled water, cap it, and mix it well. This is stock free. Pour the contents of stock free into a clean dry beaker and then pipette 10 milliliters of that stock free into a clean 50 milliliter volumetric flask. Drain the 10 milliliters into the 50 millimetric flask, then fill it to the mark with distilled water and mix. This will be stock number four. Transfer all of stock four into a clean, dry beaker. Then use a three milliliter volumetric pipette to pipette three milliliters of stock four into a 50 ml volumetric flask. Next, you will add five milliliters of 10% hydroxylamine, 10 milliliters of 10% sodium acetate, and 25 milliliters of 1 tenth phenantholine to the three milliliters in the volumetric flask. Then fill the flask to the mark with distilled water, cap, and mix well. This will be your unknown solution. Transfer this to a test tube called the test tube unknown. In part three, we are now ready to use the spectrometer. The spectrometer should have been turned on before you arrived at lab, so they had time to warm up. The first thing we want to do is to set the wavelength. Set the wavelength to 508 nanometers using the wavelength knob. Then with nothing in the sample compartment, with the compartment lid closed, you want to use the left knob on the front to set the percent transmit reading, which is the top scale, to exactly zero. When reading the scale, you want to make sure that you are oriented so that your eye is directly looking at that orange needle. This is the purpose of the mirror behind the scale. If you're looking at it from an angle like this, you'll see that the reflection in the mirror is not lined up with the needle. Therefore, there'll be parallax error in reading the measurement. You want to line your eye up so that the needle and its reflection are right on top of each other. Next, we will fill a cuvette with distilled water. You want to fill the cuvette at least to the bottom of the solid circle on the side. Then you wipe off the outside of the cuvette with a Kim wipe, and you place the cuvette in the sample compartment with the white stripe facing you. We will now use the right knob to set the 100% transmittance. Fill the cuvette with solution A and dump it out in the sink. This is conditioning the cuvette. Then fill the cuvette again with solution A up to the solid circle. Wipe off the outside with a Kim wipe and making sure you have the stripe facing you, place the cuvette into the spectrometer and close the lid. You will now want to read the percent transmittance, which is on the top scale. Dump out the first cuvette in the sink. Condition with a little bit of solution B, dump that out in the sink, and then fill the cuvette with solution B up to the circle. Wipe off the outside with a Kim wipe, and keeping the stripe line toward the front, place it in the sample compartment. Then record the percent transmittance of solution B. Repeat the procedure with solution C. 
and record the percent transmittance. Again, repeat the procedure with solution D and record the new percent transmittance. Repeat the sol with solution E, recording the percent transmittance. Finally, repeat the procedure with solution U, recording the unknown's percent transmittance.